Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we are going to be talking about the feat Warcaster. Rawr! Also spells, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how best to depict that with just hand motions, but you know. This is a nifty little a nifty little feat. I think I underrate this feat. Um, I don't think it's bad by any stretch, but it's like, you know, it's fine. It's uh prerequisite is you have to be able to cast a spell. Um, and then it says these words. You have to be crack you have practiced casting spells in the midst of combat, learning techniques that grant you the following benefits, and you get three things. So you have advantage on constitution saving throws that you make to maintain your concentration on a spell when you take damage. So if something damages you and you're concentrating on a spell, you get advantage. Huzzah. Very useful. Two, you can uh, you can perform the somatic components of spells while you have a weapon or shield in one or both hands. This just makes this feat a prerequisite for a bunch of cleric builds. This basically says if you want to be doing all of your casting repertoire and all of your martial repertoire, you need Warcaster. Uh, and then finally, whenever a hostile creature's movement provokes an attack of opportunity from you, you can use a reaction to cast a spell at that creature rather than making the opportunity attack. The spell must have a casting time of one action and must target only that creature, um, which is nifty. And there's yeah. a lot of potential with that ish. I mean, it's still a broken tax opportunity. So there's going to be like, there's like, there's going to be a small window where that's actually happening. Um, but it could be potentially powerful. Uh, Bob, is what stands out to you is like, this is the reason to take Warcaster. Is there anything that, like, oh, I have to have? I mean, all three of those things are, I think, are great. Um, like the, the somatic components thing, I just feel like that's kind of a given that, uh, I mean, it has to be there, but you know that's why I'm not so excited about it. If, yeah. I mean, if that wasn't part of it, you know, this would you you, you wouldn't even bother with this. But um, it, it makes the last line really usable because if you don't have that and you're like playing an upfront character, like let's say you're playing a an abjur or wizard and you're in the front line trying to beat people down with your stick and cast spells, um, not being able to have an open free hand to cast a lot of the spells that you want as reactions is a real big bummer. Uh, and this just says, now nah, you can be holding stuff when that happens. And that's pretty good. Well, that, and I mean, if you want to take Warcaster, mm -hmm. it's because you are getting in the thick of things. Yes. Um. So anyway, that's, that might be the most important, but uh, it's not the one I, I'm, I get excited about. I, it's really a toss up. I guess mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with the uh, the first thing. That's uh, no, you know what? Yeah, that's that's probably the best thing. But uh, the one I get excited about though is the, is the third thing. The uh, the opportunity spells. Bonus opportunity spells. Yeah, that's yeah. uh that's probably the least useful, but uh, it's the maybe the most fun. It definitely adds the most to your character, right? Like, there's going to be... that. That is the first tool you get that's like, this is a major new thing you can do. Um, it also doesn't, like... It doesn't require that spell be damaging or anything like that, which means a lot of saber dice qualify, which is pretty neat. So you can, like, hold person on that. You can uh, polymorph on that, banishment on that, do a bunch of weird little things. I mean, you probably don't do, like, the banishment and stuff. This is probably, like, a, a hold person kind of situation. Maybe it's, like, a hideous laughter kind of thing where they go to leave and you go, actually, you're going to drop to the ground and start laughing, and then I'm going to continue to kick you. Um... <laughs> Because you're prone, I get advantage on those attack rolls then, and that's pretty neat. Um, at the same time, I think that like opportunity attacks don't happen all that frequently. Um, normally, they're monsters making them, and you're the the players care about the positioning and of them and that kind of stuff. Uh, if monsters are ever in retreat, you're probably winning anyway. And at that point, like you don't you don't need this. You can probably cast the spell at range and not have any issues with it. Like it's not going to be the difference between it escaping or not. Very likely. Um, no, but it's an extra bit of fun tacked on yes. to an already good feat. Agreed, agreed. Um, it definitely, like you, like you said, this is this is the most exciting bit of the feat. I just, I don't think people should take it for that reason. No. I think people don't uh, take it yeah, for that reason. All right, I did, I did forget the wording of your actual question while I was rambling on. But yeah, <laughs> no, the, what I would be taking it for would be the uh, the first part, the concentration. That's, yeah. I think 95% of characters that take Warcaster are like, all right, I got 20 of my charisma, I got a 20 int, now what? Uh, oh, this gives me advantage on charisma, or constitution saving throws to maintain concentration? Great. Because that's been a bear of a problem this whole time, and this is a solution to that problem-ish. It's kind of, it's, it's like a, it's a big boon in keeping your concentration level. If this ever gives you, like, an extra two rounds, or a round-ish uh, round of 
uh, your duration on your concentration spells. It takes a lot of spells from like uncastable to good, and it takes mm-hmm. a lot of really good spells into really busted territory. Um, because then, like, even hitting the wizard stops being such an easy solution to getting the concentration to go away. It starts becoming like a uh, well, if you're ever dealing less than twenty damage. Um, to the wizard at once, they're probably passing it because they have advantage and its DC is only 10. So most of the time, if they're making, uh, if they're taking damage to proc this, it needs to be a lot of damage, and even then, they're still probably passing it once they get advantage, right? Because you're losing the instances where ones and, like, threes are realistically dropping it, because that just happens so much more infrequently. Um, so it ends up being, like, you're far more likely to maintain your, uh, maintain your saves, which is great. Now, I take back what I said before. I, I don't even know what I was I, what I was thinking, but um, no, this is not exclusively for someone who wants to get in the thick of things. This is no. uh, no, not at all. This is for anyone who just wants to maintain their concentration. Yeah, if you care while, about the first line of text, you take yeah, it, and the rest yeah, of it is it's you know, if you, for if other you're casting, people specifically. If you're casting an effective concentration spell, you're making yourself a target. Yes, and uh, yeah, this this helps with. Yeah, this, like, you could remove the other two lines from this, and I think I still think it becomes, like, a feat that a lot of people go, yeah, okay, it's not amazing, but that's a really powerful and important line of text. It's something mm-hmm. that there aren't a lot of feats aimed at spellcasters that are, like, they, compared to, like, the martial characters, right? They give all the different weapon options and the different, like, savage attacker and the bludgeoning, slashing, piercing stuff they released in Xanathar. like, there's a billion feats for marshals. There's, like, five, if that, for casters, and that's in, if you include magic initiate and stuff. Mostly it's just warcaster and spell sniper. Um, and spell snipers... We talked about it. You can go find that video of us uh, being like, this is kind of whatever. Uh, Warcaster is not whatever. Warcaster is a meaningfully defensive, a good defensive option to empower your concentration spells. And concentration spells you'll care about throughout the whole game. Like you said, if you really care about concentrating on a powerful effect, if you really can't care about conjuring uh, your concentration on conjure woodland beings, which you definitely do if you're allowed to cast it, um, you're going to want Warcaster to defend that because your DM is going to be like, okay, well, in order to deal with all of the sprites everywhere, putting all my monsters to sleep, everything lays into the wizard and being able to be like, nah, actually the sprites get to stick around because I have advantage on the four saves that I made and the DC is still only 10. So, because you don't want to outright kill me. You don't want to be that much of a jerk. <laughs> uh, and that's like, that's a, a nifty little bit about Warcaster. We haven't touched on the middle at all, really. Um, And right now, I think, like, predominantly we've been talking about the characters taking it for... You take it because it gives you advantage on concentration saving throws for your concentration checks. Um, Yeah. Those are the words. Man, constitution and concentration are too similar that I feel like I'm just interchanging them. And there's going to be... I'm going to watch this video in the future and be like, Samuel, what are you doing? Uh, In any case, uh, the somatic component of spells matters a lot. And it matters a lot for, again, specifically clerics. And... Not for paladins, it doesn't matter for paladins at all. But for clerics, it does. Um, they're all like blade singers and stuff, and uh Eldritch Knights, they'll get text that removes this condition anyway. Um, a lot of time you'll have no real issue being able to cast with your weapon in hand, or your weapon can count as your spell focus or whatever. The real juice of it is you get to wield a shield instead of having an open hand, which is a big deal. Because most of the time, like if you're if you're warcastering ever and you have a great sword. You let go of the greatsword when you want to cast a spell, and you grab onto the greatsword whenever you're going to go back to hitting things. If you're ever using uh, any, again, anything not a shield, normally you can get access to a free hand relatively easily, like you can grab a holy symbol that's a pendant or whatever, and you have your spell focus. Oftentimes your shield will be your spell focus, but then you just don't get to hold your weapon. This is just a really big quality of for the mason shield bearing cleric specifically. Um, that's really the, the most notable thing about it. There's the niche cases where you'll get uh, multi-class builds that care about this quite a bit because they'll be like, I took a two dip in fighter for action surge and for the proficiencies, and now I'm doing the rest of like bard or whatever. Like swords bards can conceivably do that where you are playing the sword and board character. Um, that is where this line of text gets really meaningful because it means you're still doing your full caster thing while also wielding a shield. Um, I think that's probably like less than 5% of characters. I think the majority of people, this line of text doesn't matter, but for the characters that it matters on, this is almost a must-have. This is like well, a, you get I mean, this before you finish the rest of your uh, charisma or int or whatever. Or any kind of martial character that takes a uh, magic initiate, maybe. That's, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I don't know uh, how many concentration spells are going to matter that much. But and a lot um, of times you can like you can cast the spell then draw the weapon and not really have that much of an issue. It just becomes an issue whenever you want to weave it, right? You don't want to stow it and then have to redraw it and then right. restow it and then redraw it. It's still not that big of an issue. Like even in that case, it's still not like the end of the world. It's just a giant inconvenience to be like, oh, I don't have my mace out. I've already interacted with an object this turn. I cannot draw my mace in attack because I need to cast a spell next turn or whatever. You get like these little tiny hiccups that are kind of obnoxious um, because you just don't have a free hand. And you like, you don't want to drop the shield because then you lose two AC and it's a really big deal. And that's like 
the very niche case that it's very important. So I figured I'd mention it. Um, and you know, we covered the third part yeah. in the beginning, I guess. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's all all the text I find is is good. It's uh, not all amazing, but just like you like you said before, you take it for the concentration thing. Everything else is kind of gravy. Yeah, I don't know. The, the second part's not. I still feel like the second part's necessary. It's necessary for a very very few slight characters. The yeah. somatic components and like I mean, being able to do that with a shield. It's like, you have, Yeah, but like everyone that can concentrate on spells takes this once they have a 20 in their spellcasting modifier, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're a bard, regardless of what you're doing, like there's no other feat in the game that you really care about at that tier once you have a 20 charisma. So you're like, okay, great, Warcaster. If you wanted a uh, magic initiative, you took it way earlier. If you wanted any of the like the free extra spell stuff that exists, there's a bunch of it now, you took that way earlier. So you're taking Warcaster or whatever. You're like, we're in the mid to upper tiers. I have a 20 charisma. I'm ready. Let's just take Warcaster because it's easy. And I don't, I'm not, I rarely have anything more than a loot in my hands. And that doesn't change my ability to use somatic yeah. components at all. So you just took it for the, the first line of text and that's fine enough. You're literally never going to get anything out of the second two lines. And that's fine. And I think that's actually the majority of people that take Warcaster are just, oh yeah, this is, I've reached that tier. I take Warcaster because it's the fee that you take at this tier. Whatever you've finished out, your ability score increases. All right, well, do you have a rating for this? This is probably a three or a four. I'll go generous. I'll say it's a four. I think I underrate this feat. I would, I don't see it being that powerful, but I also don't play in the upper tiers that much. Um, And so I imagine in the upper tiers where concentration spells are like make or break encounters kind of good, having insurance on that's probably really powerful. Um, And Warcaster gives you exactly that. Uh, Like I said, there's not a lot of feats otherwise for a full caster. So I think four is probably like your DM is going to be like, oh my God, Warcaster means I have to hit you with more things. It's going to be a, a bit of a headache for some tables. Yeah, I'm whew, I'm tempted to give it a five, but uh that's a uh, yeah, hell. That's it's Christmas. Not really not anymore. <laughs> not but, really. Uh, I'm giving it a five. It's uh, I think when the when those when it matters, those effects are gonna be pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I haven't given anything a five in a while. Sure. That'll do. All right. Well, that was Warcaster. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Please let us know in the comments what you think. Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.